uh, I thought it'd be a great time to talk about mobile homes. I love mobile home parks. They're just so neat. I've always, I've wanted one for years and years and years, and I would always search and look for that great deal because to venture into any new kind of property, you wanna make sure that you get a good enough deal that you can make some mistakes and still come out ahead. And so, you know, I just bide my time waiting for the right deal. And this property came up at auction. And that la the last video we talked about here uh, was all about cap rates and how to identify multifamily properties and whether it's a good deal or not. So I, you know, I ran the numbers on this one. Other people were kind of aging out of the, the park ownership and so they had an estate sale. And I knew what I wanted to bid on this. I was gonna go up to 650. I showed up about a half hour before the auction because I wanted to make sure I didn't miss it because sometimes they mess up on the address and they actually did on this one. They actually messed up on the address, put the wrong address of the auction down. So half the people didn't even show up. And it was me and two other people that were inside this little conference room and were bidding on this property. And when they started, my nerves were through the roof. I was so nervous. It was uh, kind of an expensive property for us at the time. I said, man, I'm gonna be able to bid up to 650 on this. We haven't really, we don't usually buy any multifamilies. This is our first venture into multifamily. So super nervous about getting this and and not getting it because I thought it was such a, well, it could have potentially be such a good deal. So the auctioneer, he starts bidding and you know, I just raised my hand I, I and I just kind of left my hand up. And the other guy's looking at me like, what is this guy up to? And he bids and goes back to the auctioneer. He bids, goes back to me. And I just kept my hand up, just played it totally cool. Like, oh yeah. I, I'm, I'm getting this property, you know, there's just no question. And that's what it looked like from the outside. On the inside, I'm freaking out. I'm like, oh my goodness, uh, I just want to get it for as little as possible. Because in you know, auction situations, it's so frustrating because you're bidding against these other people. You don't know how high they're going to go. And a lot of times down at the public auction, you know, single family houses, it's a little bit uh, not corrupt, I wouldn't say. But, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on where we're like, hey, I want this house, this house, and this house. And you take this one, this one, and this one. And here's a couple thousand dollars if you don't bid on this one. So there's a lot of that type of stuff going on. So anyway, I just I just kept my hand raised. And after three or four bids, the guy, the other guy, the first guy was out after just the first bid. And then uh, the second guy dropped out. He's like, you know what? You, you want this property way more than I did. And honestly, I was about to stop bidding. But I just kept my hand up acting like I was going to go to the moon. So we won the property. And we won it at uh, 465 after all the auction fees and everything were paid. So we got it for $200,000 less than what I thought it was worth at the time as is. As I left that auction, my nerves were, I mean, I was just like shaking almost. I was so excited because I knew we had a whale of a deal on our hands. And at the time, like I say, it was one of our bigger deals. So I was super excited about it. You know, got home, there was several empty units. We got them fixed up. We started to raise some of the rents. We kept the rents low for the people that are in there. And we still have some rents that are low for those people. We didn't, we didn't want to just come into the park and jack up the rents for everybody. Uh, but as people moved out, we raised up the rents and we were able to in a matter of six months. And this is the the power of cap rates and the leverage that goes along with that. But so by increasing that income and by increasing those rents and tidying up the books and tidying up the park and just making a few odds and ends, we were able to increase the value by around $300,000. I'll put the number here when I get it. And this is in a matter of about six months. So we closed on that property. While we're working on this, it was a cute little park. It had 19, uh, 21 different units, but it also had an extra house that came with it. And so we immediately turned around and sold that house. And we were able to make, I don't know, I think it was, I'll put the number here, a hundred and something thousand by the, from the sale of that house. And we still had a 20 unit mobile home park. And so our, our all end of this property is now much lower than it was, it's now this. So we were super excited about that fact. So we bought this at an auction. And then a couple months later, we saw another mobile home property come up for sale on the MLS. And it had actually, I hadn't seen it. And it had actually been up for, boy, I want to say like almost a year on the MLS and nobody was bidding on it. And I was like, what is going on here? This looks like a great deal. It was a little bit far outside of town. Um, but the problem is it was in an area where there weren't a whole lot of comparable properties. The nice thing is, as an appraiser, I was able to run my income approach on this property and, and get a value what I thought it was worth. And we made an offer uh, and they said they were touting, they were so excited that they had an appraisal at 400,000. And I said, can you send me over that appraisal? I'd love to see it. Cause my numbers were coming in higher than that. I was like, why would it only appraise for 400? I got the appraisal and guess what? The, the property that, that I wanted auction well below any kind of normal arm's length transaction market price was on there as the comp number one. That's the comp that he used was an auction estate sale. So if you don't know, that's not a great comparable to use because it didn't have any exposure. It didn't have a typical exposure on the market. It just wasn't a good deal to use. 
And so I knew immediately that if he based this $400,000 valuation on that as a comparable and got the cap rate from that, that this was gonna be a slam dunk home run deal. So we ended up buying that property and we raised the same, did the same thing, raised the rents up just a little bit with new, some new people, made a few minor repairs and refinanced it right away. Within six months, that one had gone up 300,000 as well. So in general, mobile home parks, they aren't quite as sexy as a multifamily apartment building or a nice single family house. They are a very interesting and recession proof asset class. What I mean by that is, you know, in the last crash, as people got kicked out of their houses and got into foreclosure, a lot of them ran to a ch the cheapest, one of some of the cheapest options, and those are mobile home parks. And so the mobile home parks do well in good markets and in bad markets. They're kind of the last place people can go before they get pushed out of a market. So that's interesting. So I guess one of the things I attributed to that, to getting that deal was my poker face and my ability to act like I was gonna go to the moon on this property and kind of get that guy out of the running so I could get the deal for even cheaper. The third mobile home park that we bought is down in Florence, Arizona. That's the one where we're building our tiny home community. And we're super excited about that. It's taking a little longer than we expected. The town's been great to work with. And so we're looking forward to making that the highest and best use that it can be. So hopefully this video, hopefully this video was helpful and you know, like and subscribe for future content and we'll see you on the next video. So I am here at the MHCA uh, conference, uh, Manufactured Housing Communities of Arizona. Uh, it's just basically a bunch of mobile home park owners that come together and talk shop and talk about you know, what works and what doesn't work with mobile homes, um, how to work with cities and things like that.